If one word makes Egypt stand out, you can bet it's mystery. From century-old mummies, to massive pyramids, to mysteries yet uncovered, the ancient nation is simply an archaeologist's prize. One cannot just predict what would be unearthed next. So far, however, here is a list of 20 amazing discoveries in Egypt that scare scientists. Number 20. Egypt's sarcophagus, mystery black tomb opened in Alexandria. We think we have seen it all, but archaeologists keep digging up interesting, if not creepy, things from underneath us. We wonder how the building site owner would have felt when archaeologists dug up this gigantic black coffin from a site. In July 2018, a 30-ton stone coffin was excavated from a building site in Alexandria, making it one of the largest coffins ever seen in the city. This naturally would lead to various speculations about the content of this coffin. Given its size and color especially, some people had speculated that it contained the remains of Alexander the Great. Imagine their disappointment when the coffin revealed three bodies floating in a soup of sewage. Initially, these bodies were thought to be the bodies of soldiers, but it was later confirmed that the bodies belonged to a woman and two men who are believed to have been deposited at different times. There was nothing special about these corpses apart from the fact that one of the men had a hole in the skull that researchers associated with trepanation, an ancient procedure of cutting open the skull to alleviate pressure. Aside from bones, it contained four gold artifacts and the inscriptions on three represent rebirth, sleep, and fertility. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the strange topic. It seems that with Egypt, the more we dig, we bring to the Earth's surface more unanswerable questions. Look, for instance, at these two photos from a recent discovery in Egypt. At first, glancing at them leaves one with just the displeasure of being reminded of our eventual fate as humans. But upon a second look, it becomes clear and petrifying. These are no regular skeletons. The first picture makes one wonder what forces could have been responsible for this hybrid of humans and fish. Wait, is this like some mermaid skeleton? The second picture dips us into more confusion. It looks like the human had died curled up to what looks like the skeleton of a dinosaur. Both of them seem to have been trapped in that muddy pit. These photos just stir up a lot of questions. What do you think? Could this be real? As always, comment down below with the hashtag strange topic and let us know your opinion about what we just showed on screen. Now to the next one. Number 19. 4,000 year old mummy scare Egypt archaeologists. Being an archaeologist can be very much exciting as it can also be disappointing. Just when you think you're on the brink of a brilliant discovery, it turns out to be pretty normal. This could come close to what Dr. Martha, a Spanish archaeologist, felt when she and her team discovered a scary, unopened terracotta coffin on the cliffs of Aswan. The coffin had survived looting, hoping to find a mummy buried within. The researchers were baffled to discover that it was an improperly bandaged body covered in a black shroud. One of the team members commented that the mummy was really ugly, but are mummies expected to be beautiful? Further baffling was the fact that after bone analysis, it was found to be the bone of a woman more than 70 years old. How could that be given that the life expectancy of Egypt at that time was 25 years? Yes, due to infections, many children did not survive childhood and those who did lived slightly longer. More women also died during childbirth, so to find a woman who not only lived past 25 but more than 70 was quite a surprise. Number 18. The Screaming Mummy This would be one of the discoveries that would make anyone recoil in terror. This mummy is the mummy of Prince Pentawir, one of the sons of Pharaoh Ramses III, who may have been successful in an attempt to murder his father. Apparently, patricide is no new crime. Pentawir's mummy is tagged the Screaming Mummy because it was allowed to naturally mummify and it did so in a way that the mouth is agape while the facial muscles are strained. Imagine yourself screaming. Great, that's how the mummy looked. According to history, Pentawir was aided by his mother, Tai, one of Ramesses' wives, who may have mobilized the indicted women of 
Harem, a place where the assassination may have taken place. When he was found guilty of being part of the plan to kill his father, he took his life but the method is unknown. Could have been poisoning and or hanging. However, nobody knows yet whether he died screaming or was made to look that way after his death. Pentaware's mummy was placed in a cache of other mummies and a tomb at Deir el-Bahari, where his father's mummy was also placed after the robbery of his tomb. Quite the irony. This mummy of a murderer who took his own life is displayed temporarily at the Egyptian Museum of Cairo. Number 17. Cat Mummies Discovered in Ancient Egyptian Tombs We always knew that ancient Egyptians were cat lovers, but to mummify them? Weird. On the outskirts of Cairo in Saqqara Necropolis, a 4,500 plus years old tomb that was solely dedicated to cats was found. From mummified cats to wooden cat statues and even a bronze sculpture of the goddess of cats, Balset. This tomb is one of the seven at the edge of the King Yusikov pyramid complex. In the tomb were also found the scarab beetles that were sacred to ancient Egyptians as they could symbolize the sun god, Ra. So while these animals were sacred, they weren't exactly kept as pets. They were rather associated with certain deities and so were bred so they could be mummified and sold to worshippers who offered them as sacrifices or buried them with their dead. So while humans were mummified to preserve their bodies for the afterlife, animals were mummified as religious offerings. It is even alleged that this hunting and mummifying of animals may have been what caused so many baboons and abysses to become extinct in Egypt. It's sad that love for these animals started and ended in the financial gain their mummies would bring. Number 16. The Temple of Kam Ambo, Sanctuary of the Crocodiles Having a cat god and serving one can be quite easy, but it sure was not easy for priests that served in the Temple of Kam Ambo, a temple built for the Egyptian god of crocodiles, Sobek. Ironically, this god was not worshipped out of admiration but out of the violent kind of fear that can only come from an encounter with a crocodile. The people built the temple and worshipped it because it seemed like a way to get rid of the evil creatures. This temple located north of Aswan is not only a temple to Sobek but also to Horus, the falcon god. It's like a twin temple with similar layouts but two different doors. Captured crocodiles were sent into the temple of Kam Ambo where they were taken care of by priests. You can tell this was not easy for them because they were almost always in danger of losing either a limb or their lives. These priests were even expected to dress these crocodiles in jewels and ornaments fit for a king. Later, many of them were mummified. Number 15. KV-5 Tomb Egypt is no stranger to tombs, but this one found in the Valley of Kings happens to be the biggest yet. This low-lying tomb found at the entrance of the valley has, like every tomb that lies low at an entrance, suffered from being filled with washed down debris as a result of flash floods. Partial excavation of this tomb initially started in 1825 and later in 1902 but stopped because it was not possible to penetrate the tomb as they would have liked. However, in 1995, Kent R. Weeks and his team in the Theban Mapping Project were finally able to penetrate and discover the true extent of the tomb. This tomb is believed to belong to the sons of Ramesses II because the number of the outer rooms, 70, corresponds roughly to the number of sons the pharaoh sired. However, further excavations revealed that the tomb is larger than was initially thought with 130 plus rooms discovered so far in 2006. These other rooms indicate that this was a burial ground for most of Ramesses II's children, both sons and daughters especially those who died during his lifetime. The skull fragments of Amun Her Kapeshef, the firstborn son of the pharaoh and Queen Nefertari, were also found in this tomb. It's so scary that we do not have an idea of exactly how many dead bodies there are. Experts believe it's in the hundreds though. Number 14. Ushabti, a servant for the afterlife. 
Ancient Egyptians buried their dead with a lot of fanfare and figurines, some of which were carved while others were mummified. These figurines were believed to help guide a soul into the afterlife. This is no different for the Ushabtis. Ushabtis are human-like figures made out of almost anything like wood or clay. However, the most commonly used material was faience, a ceramic made without clay that is fired and glazed. They usually have their arms crossed over their chests, and colors varying from blue to green or any other colors. Ushabtis were meant to come to life when the deceased came alive in the afterlife and helped them perform menial tasks. Since most of Egypt at the time depended heavily on agriculture, they were depicted carrying agricultural implements like hoes and bags of seeds with the belief that the afterlife was similar to the physical world. Inscriptions and spells were made on the Ushbatis to ensure that they knew exactly what they would do in the afterlife. Though they were buried with the deceased, there were a few instances where a name was inscribed on them. Identification of Ushbatis was only possible if they were found in the sarcophagus of the deceased. Ushabtis are nothing fancy, they look like toys that should belong in a horror movie. Number 13. Container Full of Meat How about a little commercial break from the mysteries? Anyone care for some meat? Well, how about some 3,500 year old meat? Gross, I know. The joke's about one of the least appetizing Egyptian discoveries of all time. So, close to Luxor, archaeologists have unearthed the site of an ancient city believed to be the largest found in Egypt so far. Owing to its peculiarities, the ancient dwelling, known as the city of Athens, has been described as a lost golden city. Amongst the pristine artifacts recovered from the city was a container filled with what experts believed to be dried or boiled meat. Yikes. The meat is estimated to be as old as 3,500 years old. We can tell the archaeologists that made the discovery will have a hard time patronizing a butcher. It helps our curiosity that the vessel containing the meat bears an inscription. It reads, Year 37, dressed meat for the third Heb said festival from the slaughterhouse of the stockyard of Ka made by the butcher Louis. This valuable information is proof that people had actually lived and done business in the ancient city, and it had been during the co-regency of King Amenhotep III with his son Akhenaten. Further excavations might reveal more information, but for now, we don't know why this city was abandoned. Number 12. Tutankhamun's Curse the ancient Egyptians regarded the supposed transition of a soul into the afterlife as a journey that should be unperturbed at all times. Hence, priests would enshrine the tombs of kings and queens. They believe a curse, Pharaoh's curse, follows anyone who consciously tampers with any such tomb. Brings us to the awful story of a British archaeologist, Howard Carter. In late 1922, Carter had made the groundbreaking discovery of the King Tutankhamun's tomb. A young pharaoh who had died at roughly 18 was buried in the Valley of the Kings, Egypt, with his team and Lord Carnivorn, a keen amateur Egyptologist who was funding the project. He had found the young pharaoh's mummified body as well as a wealth of religious objects, wall paintings, and inscriptions. While this discovery brought Cater great fame, it also started a chain of reactions that gave the myth of the pharaoh's curse worldwide acclaim. It seemed like it had been the beginning of the end for Carter and his colleagues, who all perished in strange ways. First, it was the mysterious death of Carter's beloved canary, then Lord Carnivon, who had strangely died after a mosquito bite he got graduated into a blood infection. Lights had gone off at the time he died, making speculations run wild. There are many other alleged victims of the curse, but of course, there are as well many who lived long after. Number 11. Osiris and Walter Brian Emery. Get ready for the goosebumps because here's yet another terrifying tale. March 1971 found a British Egyptologist in the middle of excavation at Saqqara. The man, Walter Brian Emery, had been at the top of his game, making significant progress in the study of Luxor, Nubia, and Thebes. While digging at Saqqara, he unearthed a little statue of Osiris, the Egyptian deity of death which he took back to his office at the end of the long, exhausting day. Weirdly, as soon as he got to the office, he had vanished into the restroom. Quite alright, nothing suspicious about the 60 plus year man urgently needing to take a pee after a long day's work. What happens thereafter is what is not just scary, but unfathomable. 
Shortly after he went to the restroom, his assistant started to hear him sobbing within in a painful outcry that was unlike anything he had ever heard. His assistant dashed to the bathroom and discovered Emery sweating and shivering, holding onto the sink. Despite repeated requests to explain what was wrong, Emery had stood motionless, a breathless shell of his former self. The assistant ran around to seek help, but it was of no use. Emery was diagnosed with right-sided paralysis, which rendered him unable to talk, and the next day, he died. So much for trying to get a souvenir. Number 10. Royal Cash Tombs are no strange deal in Egypt, but imagine one holding the remains of so many important ancient kings. That gives you the royal cache. This is an ancient tomb near Deal El Bahari in the Theban cemetery opposite modern day Luxor. During the 21st dynasty, the royal cache used to serve as a storehouse for the royal mummies. Originally, it was used as the final burial place of Amun Pinjims II's high priest, his wife, Nesikones, and other close relatives. Now, though, the tomb is known as TT320 and it's hard to overestimate its significance. More than 50 royal mummies were discovered there, including the remains of some of the greatest pharaohs from the 17th to the 20th dynasties. Talk about Amenhotep III, Ramesses II, Thutmose III, and Seti I. There were 11 pharaohs in all, and their mummies were in pretty good condition too. The cache also contained about 6,000 burial objects. Locals had found the cache in 1871, an Egyptologist in 1881, and as you'd expect, the discovery had caused a sensation. The mummies instantly became the center of attention at the New Egyptian Museum, then in Giza. The finding was dramatized in the 1969 film, The Night of Counting the Years, which went on to become one of Egyptians' most well-known films. Number 9. Ancient Egyptian Retainer Sacrifices How does anyone get convinced to sacrifice their life on Earth for another human's comfort in the afterlife? It would be utterly impossible except that the ancient Egyptians did not regard their kings as humans. They revered their pharaohs as gods. Little wonder retainer sacrifices had been an actual thing. Retainer sacrifice was a sort of human sacrifice, wherein pharaohs and other high court aristocrats and servants slaughtered after their deaths so that they could make continue to serve them in the afterlife. Absurd, right? Well, the ancient Egyptians strongly believed in an afterlife. This can be seen in most of what has survived of their civilization which was pretty much tombs, temples, and other religious monuments. One of their major beliefs regarding life after death was the belief in the Ka. The Ka was said to be one of life's source, essence, and soul which would live on after death. Because of his prominent role in both religion and politics, it was particularly necessary to secure the comfort of the king's Ka in the afterlife. This was the basis of the sacrificing servants especially young men in their 20s after a king's death. It's not clear whether these servants willingly participated in these rituals with hopes of getting an elevated status in the afterlife, or if they were simply murdered. Whatever the case, we're just thankful the practice has faded away. Number 8. Plague of Cyprian between 249 and 262 AD, ancient Romans were dropping dead in their numbers, 5,000 each day, not from war or famine, but from a disease that came to be known as the Plague of the Cyprian. The name pays tribute to Saint Cyprian, the Bishop of Carthage at that time, who was the best known chronicler of the disease. He had observed and described the gruesome manner in which the disease wreaked havoc, severe vomiting, ejecting of blood from the nose, loss of limb, and eventually death. Saint Cyprian had seen the affliction, which is now thought to have been caused by smallpox, as a sign of the passing away of the world. Pretty much sounds like the Ebola we got. You're wondering what now? Well, let's cut to the chase. Italian archaeologists have discovered an old burial ground near Luxor, Egypt, containing the remains of what appear to be the plague victims. The 3rd century tomb had been used to halt the spread of a deadly plague of Cyprian, as the city known as Thebes during the Roman period, like many other locations, had been afflicted with the pandemic. Kilns used to make lime to cover the victims were also discovered. Lime was the only available disinfectant at that time and required heating limestone to high temperatures. A bonfire where sick people were burned to stop the spread of the extremely infectious disease was seen too. Number 7. Mummy of Ancient Egyptian Teenager Buried in Fine Jewelry 
According to the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, archaeologists unearthed the ancient mummy of a teenage girl geared up in magnificent jewelry, including beaded necklaces and copper earrings. The youngster couldn't have been more than 15 or 16 years old when she died. A team of Spanish and Egyptian archaeologists have discovered her mummified remains, as well as a pair of leather shoes, while excavating ahead of a construction project at the Dra Abul Naga Necropolis on Luxor's West Bank. The teenage mummy had been found laying on its right side in a coffin carved out of a sycamore tree trunk. She had been buried with a trove of accessories, which the team assumes might be part of her bridal trousseau. Although the mummy had deteriorated over the years, her jewelry has been restored to its original state. They include four necklaces linked together by a clip, two rings on her fingers, and two spiral earrings that seem to have been plated with copper leaf. Judging by the number of prized items discovered in her grave, the team believes the teenager belonged to a wealthy Egyptian home. Number 6. Archaeologists Discover 50 Unidentified Mummies through joint efforts with the Research Center for Archaeological Studies of Minyan University, archaeologists have discovered an ancient burial site containing colorful mummy cases, papyri, and pottery. The discovery made from the burial chambers in the Tuna El Gabel archaeological site in Minya, Cairo, Egypt had been the first of 2019. The mummies had been 50 in all, 12 of which were children and date back more than two millennia to the Ptolemaic era, 323 to 30 BCE. They were dug up from four, nine meter deep burial chambers, some uncovered were from stone coffins, some others found wrapped in linen. Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, Mustafa Waziri, had notified reporters that although the mummies were found in a well-preserved state, they were unidentified. No names have been found on any of the mummy cases, so there is no telling who these ancient people were or what their story had been. He said the mummification method used for these individuals, though, was an obvious pointer to the position as prestigious people in their society. Even at that, some of the cases were found embellished with demotic handwriting, an ancient Egyptian script commonly employed by common people. There's no telling about these 50. Number 5. Professional Mourning By now, you agree that the ancient Egyptians had a vast, deep, and rich culture. Here's a funny one, though. The ancient Egyptians had and employed the services of professional mourners. Professional mourners are basically a group of women that cry and wail at funerals, but for a fee, and well, professionally too. The expertise of these professionals was in making a dramatic show of grief. Evidence of their existence had been discovered through pyramids and tomb inscriptions found in Egypt. These inscriptions depict women standing next to tombs with their heads on the backs of their necks, crossing their arms, on their chests, kneeling, and or leaning their bodies forward in manners that indicate sorrow. The most important of them, though, is said to be the two women mimicking Isis and Nephithys, who are both Egyptian goddesses believed to play a crucial role in the afterlife. As part of the funeral rituals, the professional mourners were required to impersonate them. This is seen in most of the inscriptions found, with one of them at either end of the corpse. Interestingly, the impersonation exercise was not open for just about any mourner. It had to be a childless woman who would have her body completely shaved and the names of the two goddesses tattooed on her shoulders for identification. Wow! Number 4. Mummified Babies Found in Tutankhamun's Tomb Archaeology is our most reliable medium of transport for visiting the far past and sometimes, the ride leaves us pleasantly surprised. This is about the mummified bodies of the fetuses found alongside a ton of other things in King Tutankhamun's tomb. Anyone remember the pharaoh that had supposedly placed a curse on Howard Carter, a British explorer that unearthed his tomb in 1922 near the ancient Nile city of Luxor, Egypt? That's the one. The fabled king, Tutankhamun, is one of ancient Egypt's most famous names. He was said to have been made pharaoh at the age of nine and had mysteriously died after ruling for roughly ten years. Nobody had an insight into the life of his legendary pharaoh, but with the recent discoveries that might be about to change. So, the two mummified fetuses found in this pharaoh's tomb have been identified to be stillbirths, a girl at almost full term and another at four months. What had stunned researchers though was the result of the DNA analysis carried out on their well-preserved remains. The results show that these stillbirths were the much more likely offspring born to King Tutankhamun by his young wife. 
Despite the disparity in size, they appeared to be twins from a single pregnancy. Aha! Might be a drop in the ocean, but now we know something solid about Egypt's legendary boy pharaoh. Number 3. Massive Statue of Ancient Egyptian Pharaoh Found in Cairo Archaeologists from Egypt and Germany have found a giant statue submerged in groundwater in slum in Cairo. The object, made of quartzite, was spotted in the working class area of Matyria, among unfurnished buildings and mud roads. It's such a big discovery because the statue is thought to be a depiction of the famous pharaoh Ramesses II. The ancient people revered every pharaoh as a god, but some like Ramesses II almost lived up to the reverence. Pharaoh Ramses II, also known as Ramses the Great, was the third of the 19th dynasty of Egypt and ruled from 1279 to 1213 B. In the history of ancient Egypt and kings, this is one of the most celebrated and powerful. Archaeologists suggest that the location of the discovery is proof that the 8 meter colossus is indeed Pharaoh Ramses II. The place is close to where Heliopolis had been an ancient city whose sun temple was founded by Ramses II. To add to it, an 80 centimeter long part of a limestone statue of the Pharaoh's grandson, Seti II, had also been found. Number 2. Egypt Roman Era Mummy Found in Egyptian Oasis the sands of Egypt's Baharia oasis have yielded yet another discovery, a three-foot-tall female mummy belonging to a woman or child who died around 2,300 years ago, during the Greco-Roman period. This recent find was set off by excavation work for a youth center construction. Egypt archaeologists found the Roman-era female mummy enshrined in a beautiful gypsum stone coffin and adorned in Roman clothing style. The mummy wasn't the only thing dug up there though. There were some glass and clay vessels, some coins, four anthropoid masks, and a depiction of the four sons of the Egyptian sky god Horus, shown on a sheet of gold. Fourteen Roman era tombs that feature a unique interior design with stairways and corridors were also discovered. Director of Cairo and Giza Antiquities, Muhammad Afifi, the archaeologist who oversaw the dig, suggests that the tombs could date as far back as 300 BC. The significance of this most recent discovery is that there could be a large Greco-Roman cemetery around the area and who knows what could be uncovered from there. Number 1. Two Lion Cub Mummies Discovered in Egypt for the First Time we know the ancient Egyptians were such great cat lovers that they'd mummify the poor felines who cared nothing about having an afterlife or its supposed comfort. Now there's even more. The Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities has announced the discovery of two mummified lions dating back roughly 2,600 years in a tomb in Saqqara. This find is worthy of note because it is the first time archaeologists are unearthing a whole mummy of a lion or a lion cub. The lion cub mummies are still being analyzed, being just about 3 feet in length though might imply that they were not completely developed when they died. Three more mummies belonging to a large cat were found close to lion cubs. The exact species of these other mummies is unclear. However, they could belong to cheetahs, leopards, or any other form of large cat. And of course, it won't be Egypt if there are no cat things. Besides, the lion cubs were cat figurines and statuettes, and about 20 cat mummies. Hey. Welcome back from that little time travel into the life of the ancient people of Egypt. Fascinating tour, isn't it? So, which of these amazing discoveries piqued your interest the most? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on your screen right now. Till next time, see ya.